Hi, everybody. I'm Eric Eldon with TechCrunch, and with me today is Jeff Wiener, the CEO of LinkedIn. Uh, he's led it through a successful IPO and has been impressing Wall Street ever since. And I'm going to be talking with him today just about uh, where the future of LinkedIn is and how that fits in with the rest of the world economy, which you're an increasingly big player for. So uh, first, just tell me a little bit about what's happening at LinkedIn right now. You have this thing called the economic graph um, that you've started talking about late last year, which is sounds like it's going beyond uh, recruiting and sales and ads and the basics of your business now. Yeah. What exactly is the economic graph? So all the value that LinkedIn's created thus far today is largely oriented around what we call the professional graph, which maps the world's professional connections up to three degrees. It helps you get your foot in the door with new companies, it helps you better leverage and tap your network uh, to create value, not only in terms of finding jobs, but also to be great at the job you're already in. But our longer term vision, if you look out, say, 10 years, is, is much bigger than that. And what we'd like to do is develop the world's first economic graph. When we talk about the economic graph, graph we're talking about mapping the global economy. So more specifically, we want to digitally represent every economic opportunity in the world, full time and part time. What's an economic, a job? A job, for example. Uh, but increasingly, jobs are fragmented. You know, it's not just about full time work the way it's been historically. Uh, we want to digitally represent every skill required to obtain one of those opportunities. We would like there to be a profile for every company in the world and who you know at those companies up to three degrees. Uh, with the launch recently of our university profile capability, we'd like there to be a profile representing every higher educational organization in the world. We would like to see a professional profile for every member of the global workforce, over three billion people. And we'd like to ultimately overlay the professionally relevant knowledge and information for each of those individuals, companies, and universities to the extent they'd like to share it. And our goal would then be to get out of the way and allow each of those nodes to connect to where it can create the most value and for capital, all forms of capital, uh, intellectual capital, working capital, human capital, to go to where it can best be leveraged. And in doing so, uh, we hope to play a role in transforming the global economy. So what might that look like for a small business? Let's say a mom and pop store on the corner in, I don't know, uh, Fresno, California. Well, for starters, it's challenging for small businesses to compete with larger companies within certain communities for talent. And so for that small business to have a profile, to be able to represent, uh, for lack of a better term, their talent brand, why it would be great to work at that small business, what that small business is all about, the vision of the founders, uh, their mission, their culture, uh, how they're trying to make a difference within their local community, and for people to be able to connect with that company, people for whom that makes a lot of sense in terms of their career. Walk me through just what that looks like as a user, if you're the business. Well, literally, I mean, you can do a search for a company within a specific geography, and uh, that company, their profile uh, may emerge as one of the top or most relevant results, and then there's gonna be a tab on that profile for careers, and on that career tab, uh, those founders of that small and medium-sized business are going to have an opportunity to, to show the world what they're all about with the same ease and facility that you'd see historically much larger enterprises able to do so. What do you need to do for LinkedIn to get there? Well, the beauty of it is uh, we're already down the path, so none of that science fiction. I mean, what you're describing sounds a lot like LinkedIn today in some ways in the sense that a business will list job openings and I can go and look at that. Yeah, it's much more than job openings. Job openings would be a part of it, but you know, the company profile page, the knowledge, business intelligence, information, data, insights, uh, a professional profile for every individual that ultimately would like to find work. Uh, it goes way beyond uh, jobs. It also is about making sure that people in jobs have access to the right knowledge they need to be great at the work that they're already doing. But to your point, in terms of what we already do, every dimension that I, I referenced earlier uh, is up and running. So we've got, speaking of company profiles, people may not realize this, we have north of three million active company profiles on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, we're fast approaching a quarter of a billion members. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a, a lot of work that's already uh, been done uh, to lay the foundation to make this a reality. And what's the next step? Continue to scale it. Continue to scale it. Continue to invest in every one of those dimensions. You know, we've been talking about professional knowledge, so continuing to improve our homepage experience which is now generating billions of updates on a weekly basis, each of which is uh, customized for the individual member based on who they are, their skills, their ambitions, their connections, their industries, et cetera. 
Uh, LinkedIn Today is a, a, a personalized trade magazine for individuals based on social news sharing. LinkedIn Influencers now enables you know nearly about, 500. What about software? I mean, there have been some rumors around what you guys are interested in building. You're integrated with Salesforce now, but you're also a separate way to provide sales leads for businesses. Um, are they a competitor? No, Salesforce is a, a partner today, and uh, we. What about able, what about in five years? I think they'll continue to be a, a partner of ours. Uh, you know, Salesforce is able to leverage our APIs to facilitate what we call social selling. Mm -hmm. So it enables a salesperson or a business development professional to leverage their network to ultimately convert what would have been a cold call into a warm prospect, which drives much higher sales effectiveness. What, what, I mean, tell me a little bit more about your software developer process. You, In-house, you build something, you'll build uh, tools for your company to use, and if you, you told me if you like them well enough, you'll push them out to the public. Tell me, tell me what you're working on in this area. Sure, so I think you're referring specifically to how we at LinkedIn are eating in our own restaurant, for mm -hmm. lack of a better term, and leveraging LinkedIn as a platform to generate value for our employees. Mm -hmm. And it's important there to draw a distinction between what historically has been public professional network, uh, which is what LinkedIn is, where most of the content being shared on LinkedIn is publicly available by design and a private professional network, which is what you're going to increasingly see within the enterprise, where there's sensitive information, competitive information. And so at LinkedIn, we're building tools that enable us to get more value from our own platform. And in success, to the extent we generate the right kind of engagement and the right kind of uh, productivity enhancement, uh, we would then be in a position, uh, by virtue of the platform, to think about productizing that. What's, I mean, so it sounds sort of like a Yammer type interface or chatter or something like that that you might offer? Well, we'd want it to be uh, specific and unique uh, to what we offer today. Uh, I think you would see greater emphasis on things like professional identity, for example. But again, there, there's, there's no definitive plans to offer that as a product. What we're trying to do is just leverage LinkedIn and get as much value from it as employees mm -hmm. as we possibly can. Um, what a, who do you consider a competitor for the economic graph? I mean, people like to reference Facebook. Occasionally, Facebook will do some sort of professional update that will get people buzzing. But so far, they seem to be trying to be a much broader layer than what you guys are doing. You're work focused. Who else is doing that? There's no company right now that has the professional focus at the scale that we do. But that doesn't mean that we're, we're not focused on the competitive landscape and uh, future competitors, current competitors. You know, uh, there's other social platforms that operate with a far greater horizontal focus that could always enable a third party developer. Who would you? Well, we're, we're gonna stay focused on a, a exclusively a professional context. You know, that has served our members well, our customers well. To date, 80% mm -hmm. uh, plus of our members uh, are constantly reinforcing the fact they wanna keep their professional lives and their personal lives separate. And so I think our context has served us well, but we're going to continue to keep an eye out for future competitors. Google? I mean, Google Plus? I think with regard to search engines, if there were any search engines out there that decided to get more focused within a professional context, uh, that could introduce a new dynamic. But again, that's all we focus on. It's mm -hmm. all we do. And I think as a result of that, we're able to create greater relevancy, greater value. And to your point earlier, uh, within the enterprise, I think increasingly companies, large companies, are going to be thinking about how they leverage social assets and social platforms uh, to make employees more productive and successful. And that could introduce a new competitive dynamic. Uh, tell me a little bit more about your content plans. I mean, uh, you know, it, from afar, it's been hard for me to tell if you're trying to eventually make LinkedIn do, into a sort of a Bloomberg type service where you have news on top of your, you know, instead of financial data, you have professional network. Um, but you haven't described it quite that way. What, what do you see LinkedIn, your influencer program, and your whole constellation of content properties? What's the end goal for that? The, the objective is to be the definitive professional publishing platform, where we make it as easy as possible uh, for publishers like your own and anyone who wants to share professionally relevant content to do so at scale, and for our membership to be able to tap that business intelligence to be better at the jobs that they're already in. So you mentioned LinkedIn influencers, and that has certainly uh, been a, a, a big move in that direction in terms of, if nothing else, shifting perception of what LinkedIn's all about. You know, historically, uh, there were some people that would have said LinkedIn is a Rolodex or it's a way to get a job. And with the, the launch of influencers and you know people like Richard Branson now being followed by well north of two million uh, of our members, 
uh, sharing information about how to become an entrepreneur and how he built his company. And you know, he's not alone. Jack Welch and the President of the United States, et cetera. But you're not going to get into the news business per se. You're going to aggregate news and, and provide that with your own sort of personal blog posts for people. If we were going to offer original content, I think it would be a, a very lightweight layer. We're mm. extremely fortunate to have uh, a Tiger team of uh, truly world-class uh, editors, you know, led by Dan Roth, uh, who we hired from Fortune. And, and he's built a wonderful group that helps curate our site. Mm -hmm. And for us, it's not about the editorial at the exclusion of machine learning and data optimization or at the exclusion of the, the social connectivity and, and the viral dynamics that enable us to also generate a signal. It's all three of those things. It's taking the best of each of those disciplines to create the most relevant content experience. And so are you looking at things, probably not Tumblr, but Medium, for example, as more of a competitor these days? I, you know, I think Medium is, is much more broad-based than just a professional context. And there's a, there's a lot of content in the world. Mm -hmm. And our job is to package up the, the most relevant content we can find for our members. Hmm. Are you still uh, working on your developer platform? I know you guys have launched a few versions of that. Um, the data terms are fairly restrictive compared to some other platforms. Are you still pushing that with developers? We, we are. Uh, we're approaching uh, roughly 100,000 developers who have keys to the APIs. And Salesforce is one of the better examples. Yes, yeah, Salesforce. There are uh, companies, you know, there's over a million and a half unique domains on the internet right now that offer a share on LinkedIn button, mm -hmm. uh, speaking of the publisher platform and uh, working with publishers like yourselves. But in terms of sharing data out to other sites similar to the Facebook APIs, are, are you looking at doing anything more along those lines, or are you focused more on being a services and a content publisher company? Uh, you know, I, I think it's going to evolve over time. One of our primary objectives is to work wherever our members work. Mm -hmm. And so we're investing heavily in mobility, obviously, and also heavily in these APIs. We don't want people to have to be tethered to their desktop or tethered to LinkedIn.com to be able to get value from the platform. Okay. Um, tell me a little bit more about um, what's happening with with work these days. I mean, you guys are you know you guys seem to have benefited quite a bit from the recession in the sense that people without work are suddenly needing to get their resumes spruced up and they're trying to go out and find new jobs. And so LinkedIn has become a natural way for them to do that. What are the sorts of trends that you're seeing right now in the workplace? Well, uh, uh, you're, like you're, what industries are growing? What uh, you know? What types of jobs? What skills? Yeah, I think there's a, a few trends uh, in terms of what industries are, are growing on LinkedIn. We, we've seen fairly consistent patterns over the last several years, uh, where technology, the technology sector, uh, financial services, has regained some of its footing. Uh, healthcare is a, a high growth industry. Uh, in, in terms of broader trends uh, off the network, I think the fragmentation and the fractionalization of work uh, is a secular trend. I don't think that's going away anytime soon. And that's people taking uh, temporary work, uh, whether they want to, uh, mm -hmm. and they're trying to strike a, a different kind of balance in their lives or have more control, uh, or because the, the longer term full time opportunities don't exist to the same extent they once did. So I think the fractionalization work is a trend to keep an eye on. I think probably uh, one of the most important dynamics that we track is the, the skills gap and the widening skills gap. You know, a lot of people don't realize uh, with unemployment where it is in this country, roughly 7.5%, uh, and while it's improving, still higher than we'd like it to be, there's, there's over 3.8 million available jobs today in the United States. And one of the, the things that's happened is opportunities are be, being created by virtue of, for example, new technologies. But the technology is evolving so rapidly, it's challenging to train people to keep up with the new opportunities being created. I mean, aren't a lot of jobs just being automated and will never come back? And right now, the growth of new jobs, it's, it's not equal to the loss of jobs. And so a lot of people are left wondering, like, where's my place in the world? Do I have to be a developer? Do I have to be a data scientist to get a job? I don't think you have to be a developer or a data scientist. You can just look at Silicon Valley. I mean, at LinkedIn, uh, we've added probably over 4,500 jobs in the last four plus years. And roughly two thirds of those are non-technical in nature. Uh, you also, you know, you look at the resurgence of the economy in a city like New York, and Mayor, Mayor Bloomberg would be the first to tell you uh, they've created 300% more jobs than they lost uh, during the recession following 2008, and a good chunk of those are in the tourism business. Hospitality, uh, construction with housing starts is starting, starting to come back online and create jobs. You also see, with regard to technology, kind of a hybrid effect. 
And so uh, companies like Uber, companies like Airbnb are creating economic opportunities for folks uh, to be able to leverage what historically have been inefficiencies. And while that, those may not be tracked as new job creation, there's certainly economic value that's being added, and I think that's also important. What do you, where do you see that going? I mean, right now, um, like, right now there are a few bright spots in technology, but there's still massive losses in a lot of areas. Um, how do you see this evolving over the next five to 10 years? I mean, you're building your business around that evolution. Yeah, I think there's at least three things we need to be investing in. Uh, first is education. And it's not just primary school educational reform, which I think is gonna take uh, at least a generation to improve and make sure we don't have an antiquated system that's continuing to prepare kids for the jobs that once were as opposed to the jobs that will be, but leveraging new technologies and recognizing there are new skills that are necessary. And for that, you have to love things like the Khan Academy and adaptive learning platforms, uh, the work that code.org is starting to do. But also with regard to education, would love to see greater focus on vocational training. You know, there's jobs that exist today, and if we can do a better job of making sure that the current workforce is better trained to take the jobs that exist, you know, they're not just in technology. Uh, there's a lot of retail jobs that have been added over the last several years. And if we can do a better job uh, with vocational training and make sure that we're not just innovating when it comes to higher education, but vocational training as well, I think that could have immediate term impact. I think immigration reform is absolutely critical. There are people that were born outside of this country that have the unique skills to take the jobs that are available in this country that are going unfilled. And as a result, those salaries are not being paid, uh, tax revenue is not being generated, but perhaps most importantly, uh, these immigrants. You're, I mean, looking at the LinkedIn data, what are the types of jobs that, um, you know, people that we need to change the visa program for? I mean, I'm well, familiar with this to some degree, obviously, but. Yeah. What is it that you're seeing? I don't think immigration reform is, is one thing or another. I think you've got millions of people that weren't born in this country that today are in this country. Uh, they're working hard and trying to figure out the right path for them is gonna be critical. And then you also have situations where in Silicon Valley, speaking of the kinds of jobs you referenced earlier, uh, engineering jobs, data scientists jobs, uh, jobs with uh, significant skills that are required. These jobs are going unfilled at times because uh, the bar for allowing people born outside of this country to work inside this country are just too high. And I, I always recall a statistic that you might have heard by now, but 40% of the Fortune 500 was founded by immigrants or the children of immigrants. Mm -hmm. And these are the companies that are creating economic opportunities. That's mm -hmm. so absolutely essential. And then the third area is just continuing to invest in digital infrastructure to make it far easier for people to access the information they need to develop the training to obtain these opportunities going forward. Um, in, in terms of uh, just, just going back to a topic we were go, going over earlier, um, you know, you, we were seeing all these sites like GitHub pop up now where it's, or over the last years, where people are doing their work online, they're sharing their work online, and they're you know, hiring and firing each other based on their work online. Um, and that's all happening with, within these professional communities, and it ties in with LinkedIn a little bit, but it's not really what LinkedIn has, right? Like LinkedIn isn't hosting somebody's uh, you know, developer work. Um, how do you see yourself fitting into that sort of world where more and more people are just living their resume? Yeah, we, we refer to that dynamic as inferred identity, where you're not necessarily listing your experiences, but you're showcasing your work, whether it's mm -hmm. the code that you've written, or uh, a portfolio of your artistry. Uh, and one of the things we're doing along those lines is starting to evolve the profile experience on LinkedIn. So it's not traditional text-based like a resume, but it's really like a, a portfolio. And so you get a chance to showcase uh, various information, the stories that you've written, the, the photographs that you've taken, photographs of the work that you've done, down the road uh, code, today uh, patents that you've generated. And we wanna provide as much flexibility as possible for professionals of any background uh, to be able to showcase their identity. And so uh, what might that look like in the future for LinkedIn? And will it be integrated within these other sites as uh, you know, sync with my LinkedIn profile, that sort of thing? Yeah, the, the ability to log in with LinkedIn is something we've already invested in. Uh, we continue to see good traction there. And, and going back to something we talked about earlier, our goal is ultimately to enable our members to generate value from LinkedIn no matter where they are, not just mm -hmm. on LinkedIn.com. So if that can include taking elements of their professional identity where, wherever they're going, uh, we'd love to be able to make that possible. Great. Well, hey, thank you so much for your time. Thanks. Give them a big hand, everybody.